So yeah, this very exciting looking piece of MDF is the start of the light box. Yeah, I uh, go by the name of Vince. I'm an artist. Uh, used to uh, used to be a graffiti painter. Now it's my studio. And yeah, I'm currently working on a bit of work for the uh, response to Chris Curry's Kate retrospective. Uh, I'm building a light box. It's going to have a rotating disc uh, in it that gives uh, this kind of kaleidoscopic kind of light beams coming out. <laughs> The image of Darlene that I've used is kind of so iconic. It's an old Ice-T album cover from the like early 90s. And there was this figure of this woman in the crazy smallest bikini you've ever seen holding a big shotgun. I think to any uh, prepubescent boy at the time, it became such a lodged image. You go on to think, who is she? Who is this woman? And you find out that it's actually Ice-T's wife. Of a, she is the ultimate symbol, do you know what I mean? The ultimate trophy wife. It's like, out of all hip-hop artwork or, or the kind of bullshit misogyny in hip hop. She's the most iconic image. So to kind of juxtapose her with the worship of Mary, I like the idea, as I don't have a figure to celebrate, I like the idea of putting her in the work as a beacon of the aspiration I'm meant to aspire to. So it stands about six foot tall, has kind of a horrible gaudy gold frame. Tacky's not a very nice word, but uh, it's too simple. But yeah, it's got to have a certain charm. Yeah, I was really keen. I've been an admirer of Chris Filler's work for, for a long time, I, uh, since I kind of first heard about him, most people first heard about him back in like the mid-90s. I think if I was to explain why I, why I like his work, I think it's very accessible and I think I find a lot of fine art a bit pretentious and a bit exclusive and not not inviting for people to enjoy, but Chris Willis' work isn't that. I think the use of humour in his work is really accessible, and really enjoyable, and it's, well, it's a combination of his fun that he's had, but then also the kind of, he has still got beautiful kind of paintings. I think there's different levels in which you can appreciate it. I guess a lot of my, my work is very kind of, uh, uses a lot of kind of objectified products or objectified women in place of products or what role kind of this sexual objectification has in our consumer life. I don't want to show my face in this film because I, I've always worked under a kind of an anonymity of removing myself from the work and allowing the work to kind of represent itself. I want people to enjoy enjoy my work on whatever level they want to. Why I don't like doing too many interviews because I don't want to dictate what people are meant to enjoy about my work. If it's some kids and they're like, oh, I want to have big bombs and trainers, and that's the end level they're going to get the work, to enjoy the work. They're, they're enjoying it. I don't want to dictate, well, actually, it's uh, I'm critiquing your appreciation of acid trainers. As well as doing uh, the light box piece, I also, just because I do, do lots of high heels, and a lot of people that know my work know Insta heels as well, and I thought for a very obvious kind of um, visually obvious response would be me designing a pair of heels inspired by uh, Chris's work. So uh, I'm building a pair of platform heels and using uh, elephant dung as the uh, actual basis of the platform. Uh, it's anything goes when it comes to hose uh, with a silent S. So it's uh, anything goes when it comes to shoes. Uh, this is a lyric from the Big Daddy Kane song, Pimpin' Ain't Easy, and one of Chris's pieces is Pimpin' Ain't Easy, obviously referencing Big Daddy Kane, so I wanted to kind of take the lyric before that and use that, and I also quite like the idea that for anything that goes on it comes to shoes, it's even a, a pair of Insta heels made of shit is still a desirable item. <laughs>